You know my uh, feelings on long-distance relationships, and I'm out to prove my point in a big way. So I'm going to make this really simple. Let me describe you, the caller, okay? This is you. You are involved in a relationship with somebody who is currently living somewhere else. Maybe you left town. Maybe they left town. Maybe it's for school. Maybe it's for work. Maybe it's the military. These people tell you they love you very, very much, and they leave you cute, funny messages, they send you letters, cards, whatever, to let you know they're thinking about you. Sometimes you feel a little guilty because um, while they're away, you are doing exactly whatever you want to do with exactly whomever you want to do it. It doesn't really matter. The other person comes to visit once in a while. They come home or you go there to see them. And you have a big tearful reunion at the airport or on the train. Or, um, you know, one of you gets out of the car and the other comes running. But you know in your heart that uh, what that other person expects is that you've been loyal, faithful, monogamous, and in reality, you haven't been. Now, maybe you haven't gotten to the point of actually having somebody stick it in or sticking it in yet, but um, maybe you're at that point where you just have an awful lot of opposite sex friends. Friends you go out with. Friends you drink with. Friends you dance with. Friends you study with. Friends you take business trips with. Whatever. Maybe you've come close. Maybe you've done a little gropey grope along the way. But you know what? Bottom line is, you're doing stuff you can't tell that other person. Not only because you're afraid of getting caught, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Because the other person's a nice person. Maybe you even think you love them. But... Let's face it, they're not there, and you are, and uh, there's all these opportunities. And really, the other person will never know because they're not around. Now, I haven't even given out the number following my monologue yet. I'm looking at the phones. Every line is lit. Every single phone line is lit. So, again, remember, you are not the victim. You are the perpetrator. The other person is somewhere else, and you are doing whatever you want. Meanwhile, they think that all you do is sit home every night and pine away for them. They think you sit home writing love letters, or sit home crafting emails, sit home thinking about them, sit home with the power tools or the pornography, thinking about the other person. In reality, you're, oh yeah, you think about them. On a list with all the other people you think about and many of the people you actually see. If that's you, call me right now. Tom Likin. 1-800-55-800. Tom. How does a woman know when a guy's looking for more than just tail? You know, like looking for more relationships. Well, a sign sometimes of... he calls you before 11 p.m. That'll be one sign. The Tom Likas Show. Like. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. When we're done with this hour, we will see how many of you in long-distance relationships are so confident that you are as loved as you think you are. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. You are in a long-distance relationship with someone who thinks you are being faithful to them. They send you love letters. They make tearful phone calls to you. They have little reunions at holiday time with you. You meet them at the airport or whatever. But when they're not around, you do whatever you want. And they have no idea what you do. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement, Steve? That is a question. How do you answer the question, hello, question mark? How do you answer that? Um, Most uh, questions begin with who, what, when, where, or why. Okay. 
Who? Thank you. Uh, what can we uh, do for you here? Well, I'm here to answer your question. Or, uh, to, you said you got a long-distance girlfriend, and you're not uh, being such a good boy back at home. Well, uh, tell us what you're doing. Well, I've, uh, I'm seeing someone who's uh, studying abroad overseas in Spain. She's studying in Spain? Yeah. And you are in Baltimore? Yeah. All right. And uh, how long ago did she leave to go to Spain? September. She left in September? Yeah. And how long is she supposed to be studying in Spain? A year? Uh, at least. At least a year? Yeah. And she expected you to wait for her? Yeah. And she tells you she's waiting for you? That's right. Right. And uh, so how long did it take... After dropping her off at the airport, I'm assuming you did. Yep, yeah, I did. How long did it take before you started finding other things to do? Um, I actually did wait quite a while, like three weeks. Three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. And uh, were you sad for those three weeks? Oh, yeah, I was definitely sad. You were devastated? Uh, I was, I don't know if I was devastated, but I was definitely uh that was definitely pretty sad. That's right. How often uh, at that time was she calling you from Spain? She actually she emailed me at least two or three times a day, but she only called once or twice a week. It's, uh, she doesn't exactly have a lot of money to make phone calls. Well, very few do. That's and right. she was emailing you two or three times a day. And were you responding two or three times a day? I would say I emailed her at least once a day. Were you resentful about the fact that she went... Uh, honestly, a little bit, but uh, I couldn't blame her. Why not? Well, it was a, it was a fantastic opportunity for her. We'd only been dating her three months before she left. I see. So what makes her think you would wait for her? Isn't that kind of unrealistic on her part? Mm, well, I could. And not only that, when she goes to Spain, does she really think that uh, she's not going to meet Spanish men? Did we lose you there, Steve? Damn, we never yeah. got... Oh, you're there. Okay, your phone yeah, cut out there. No, I think she... Um, well, I told her I would, and, and uh, knowing her, I, I think she's awfully faithful. I have went down to visit her a couple of times you, already, so... Yeah, okay, so uh, three weeks after she left, and you were despondent, and she was writing you three times today, a day, what turned it around? What made uh, you decide to do something different? It had been just too long, and uh, I guess the male urges were just kicking in, and I couldn't stop. So where did you go? Like, how did you meet a chick? What did you do? Well, actually, I do ballroom. Well, I don't want to give too much away, but I uh, go to clubs, and I go dancing a lot, and uh, I met a lot of women there. I see. And uh, so there you are, out at clubs, dancing, and uh, you're meeting women. And uh, did you ever turn one down or say, oh, no, I have a girlfriend in Spain? Or, I mean, I imagine maybe that would be your first impulse, right? No, I definitely turned down some chicks, but some chicks were uh, too much, too tempting, too hard to say no to, and uh, I gave in. So you gave in. And yeah. uh, so uh, did you feel guilty the first time? Oh, yeah. You did. And uh, while you were busy banging this chick, did uh, she... Uh, did your girlfriend send you uh, any emails or make any phone calls to your house or anything? Yeah, she called me a couple of times when I was with, but I always, whenever I'm with another woman, I put my phone on vibrate. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I always check who it is. So uh, did that make you feel worse in the beginning? Yeah, definitely. There's definitely, I'd, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when did you stop feeling badly about it? Um, honestly, it's not... Uh, it's kind of funny for me. I, I still feel bad, but but obviously I don't feel bad enough. Somewhere deep down, do you resent the fact that she left, no matter how good it is for her? Do you resent it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, she left, right? I didn't leave. Right. So, in a way, you're getting back at her. <laughs> I guess you could say it, too, that way, sure. Yeah. I'm not criticizing you for it. In fact, uh... I completely understand how you feel. You know, here's the deal. Yeah, you, you said it yourself. You were only going out three months. If you were a priority, I don't believe she would have gone 5,000 miles away. 
I can definitely see that. But you are not a priority, and uh, so her hope is to keep you on a string while she's over there. And uh, while she's over there, she's going to be uh, meeting people who are going to say, oh, let me take you on a tour of cathedrals. Let me take you on a tour of Basque architecture. Let me take you to the running of the bulls. I mean, what, is she going to say, oh, no, I've got Steve back in Baltimore waiting for me? That's uh, that's what <laughs> that's what I have a feeling she's uh, she's saying at the end there. Huh? I, I can pretty much guarantee that's what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah. But of course she'd like to have you on a string because you're a connection to home. Mm-hmm. She'll write you and cry on your shoulder on nights when she's lonely. Turns on the TV and every channel's in Spanish. <laughs> that's what happens. I can imagine. Yeah, I've never been to Spain. But I kind of like the music. It's beautiful. It's warm all year. Yes. Right over your head. So, well, right. what do you think of the situation, Mister Lycus? Uh, I well, you know, I think you're doing what everybody does. I'm not. Tell, I'm not giving you advice. I'm just telling you. I think that's what everybody does. I could. I know other people have, and other friends that have. And when I say everybody, I don't mean all. I'm, I'm just saying in general. I think there are exceptions, but I think that generally people do what you're doing. Well, Steve, good luck to you. I know you're having a good time over there in Baltimore. And I, I, I've never been to Spain, and I don't really like the music, but I just thought I'd try that line for size, and it landed about where I expected it to land. <laughs> you see, this show is on two levels. There is the show itself that is there for the... Uh, 90% of you who aren't paying attention. And then there's kind of another show that I do for that upper crust, that 10% that actually is paying attention, that actually gets stuff like that. I hope you see that this is not an accident, that we kind of plan it this way. <laughs> What's your topic tonight, anyway? Oh, that's right. I'm talking about people who have long-distance relationships, but then when the other person is gone, uh, they do whatever the hell they want. At 1-800-5800-TOM... Let's say hello here to Patrick on the Tom Likas show. How are you? Pretty good, Patrick. Well, mine's not a long-distance relationship, but my wife is, she's gone about two weeks a month. Right. And I started hanging out with this 18-year-old uh, sophomore at, at the university. Mm-hmm. And after hanging out with her a few months, things kind of got a little crazy, and now I've got to sit down with her, I think, this week and try the Hail Mary. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God, no. Sam. (laughs) Did you use a condom? Uh, We have, but a couple of times, you know, it's stupid. I know it. Especially when you're married. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, Uh, boy. I'm going to try a variation of it and give her the whole. She knows I'm married and all that. I gotta try the, the variation and say, you know what, the best thing for you is to stay in school. And when and when you're done with school, then we can think about a family and stuff like that. But until you're done with school, we can't really. Right. What do you think of that audible at the line? I I certainly think that's one I would uh, give a shot to. Uh, not only that, uh, does she know you're married or no? She does. All right. Well, uh, you know that. Of course, down the line. Of, yeah, she hangs out at my house for. You know, three, four days at a time. Down the line, when you marry that 18-year-old, <clears throat> uh, you certainly uh, don't want your divorce to cost so much that uh, it'll end up putting a crimp in your next marriage <clears throat> to the well, 18-year-old. That's what, I, that's what I said to the 18-year-old. I said, you realize you got to keep quiet because it'll cost me about 300 grand. Yeah. And does she understand that? She does. And uh, does she want to have that baby? Uh... Well, I, I don't, I don't, I just know that she's late by about two weeks. So you, you haven't gotten to that point of having that conversation. That, that point yet, but I think she's in denial about it. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would certainly give that a shot. And again, uh, remember, uh, her own self-interests are her uh, primary concern, and so you have to play to her own self-interest, which is uh, ultimately when you leave your wife and marry her. That's right. Uh, you uh, certainly don't want the two of you to start out in the hole. That's what I. That's yeah, I'm trying to get that. You know, I, I saw this whole thing coming, and I thought we'd start laying the groundwork now. Yeah. 
Well, uh, that's if certainly if I were you, that's what I'd be doing. So I can say to all the married men out there who are having affairs, cover that thing up. Yeah. Put a glove on it, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. All right, Patrick, good luck. Thank you so much. Keep in touch. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Now, Victor hasn't done anything yet, but he's thinking about it. Victor. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm in a long-distance uh, relationship right now, and, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's not the greatest, man, because uh, those, uh, those desires are just uh, starting to... Uh, Where is she going to school? She's going to school up north, and I live down south. Now, wait a minute. You're 31. How old is she? Uh, she's 30. What kind of school is this she's going to? Um, it's actually um, a college. Yeah, but uh, what kind of college? <laughs> um, it's a graduate college. It's graduate school. Right. And what does she study? Um, art. And there's no place in Southern California where she can study art? Um, she got grants to go up there, actually, so... Mm -hmm. That's why she went, she went up there. Right. Now, is uh, she your wife or your girlfriend, or what's the deal? Um, she's kind of like my, um, girlfriend. my banging partner. I see. And so uh, she's, a, she's only a banging partner. Uh, what's the issue? She expects you to stay loyal to her, a banging partner? Um, no, that's, that's kind of like the cool thing about our relationship is that she's, like, totally open about, like, us, like, about me seeing other people. Oh, well, you know what? The only reason people are open to you seeing other people is because they want to see other people and they don't want to feel guilty about it. Right. They're never doing you a favor. We're always stupid as people. When somebody says, you know, I, I, if you want to see other people, I'm perfectly okay with that. We first think of our own self-interest and go, what a cool chick. <laughs> she lets me bang other people. It's great. Until you realize that that means that uh, she wants to bang other people, but she makes it sound like she's doing you a favor. So, um, it, yeah, it kind of seemed that way. Not, you know, like... Pal, she's doing it right now. So what, what do you think I should do? Bang other people. Oh, yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. I mean, yeah, totally, of course. Well, you know, come on. If, if she's out of town and she offered to let you bang other people, this is not a relationship. It's purely for sex. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All right, you are in a long-distance relationship, and the other person... Calls you on the phone, and sends you letters and cards with teddy bears on them. Tells you it won't be long, darling, before the two of you are together again. Maybe they plan on coming home for the holidays, for example. And meanwhile, while they're doing that, and they think that uh, you're being faithful, you're out there doing whatever you want. 1-800-5800-TOM. If that's you, call me now. 1-800-5800-866. Skip on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, Skip. By the way, I totally dug the Three Dog Night reference. <laughs> Glad somebody got it. Uh, yeah, I basically wanted to call you and let you know that I'm in a long-distance relationship. I, I wasn't following your rules, and so I kind of ended up in it. Uh-huh. She's older than me. She lives in Arizona. She came out. She buys me things. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm kind of in a long-distance relationship. The past two times she's been out, I was with another woman the night she left. Really? Yeah. So you can't wait till she leaves, it sounds like. Well, I, I don't want it when she's here. I mean, she buys me things, and she does things that a lot of other women, you know, you, something can be said for age. Uh -huh. Experience. How old is but she? She is 42. She's 42, and you're 23. Yeah. So, yeah <laughs> she's old enough to be your mother. Probably. <laughs> Probably is somebody's mother. Uh, no, actually, she, she's got no kids, but, uh, you know... Is she, she married? She wants them. No, she's not. She wants kids. She wants kids, and, and so I'm, I'm like, I, I kind of want her to know, because I know she listens to your show, so I'm kind of doing a, a sideways thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's listening right now. She's in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and so I, I figure this is the best way to let her know that, A, I'm not interested in kids, period, and, uh, B... Um, yeah. 
not only with her. <laughs> now, let me ask you this question, Skip. Uh, uh, was, was she expecting that you had a monogamous relationship, the two of you? Uh, did she ever talk to you about it? She was, uh, We never really physically talked about it, but the way that she talks, you can tell that that was what she was assuming. Yeah, well, you can usually tell if a woman is assuming that without saying it, because she starts saying, okay, Thanksgiving, I'll be arriving at 8 a.m., and you can pick me up at the airport, and then uh, Christmas Eve, I'll be arriving, and then uh, I'll be staying until uh, January the 2nd, I can stay with you, right? Okay, and then Valentine's Day, well, I've already got your Valentine's Day present picked out. Yep. Is she like that? Exactly. Uh-huh. And and it's like this last time she came out, I didn't call her for three days because mm. I was in Palm Springs with another girl. Uh huh. And she like leaves this message, you know, oh, I feel like I'm being used, and and I should have said something then, but I was a moron and I had just gotten a DVD player. I'm not even in. Yeah, you just got a DVD player. You're not even in town to use her, for God's sake. You were using somebody else at the time. Yeah. That would be my response. <laughs> I'm not, how can I be using you? I'm using somebody else right now. Well, I, like I said, there, there are lots of things. Man, you have, you've helped me become a better man, but man, I'm still in need of, of a lot of guidance. I've made so many stupid mistakes, and I still make them. Hang on a second here, Skip. Bo wants to say something to you. Bo, what is it? Skip, how are you doing, man? Doing just fine, boss. You? I got a question for you. I got to know the answer to this. Okay. How come you're using a radio station to tell a woman something that you should be man enough to tell her yourself? Uh, that's what I because, thought. Because that's I'm afraid of violence. <laughs> yeah, let's show she'd kick your butt. Probably, yeah. That is sad, man. She knows where I live, man. I got a nice house, got a nice car, and, and women go, they go crazy, man. They're, they're not all stable. They're... Especially 42 year old women with the biological time clock ticking who are flying in from Phoenix to get knocked up. Yeah. <laughs> That is that is a scary situation you've put yourself into, man. You should at least be able to get out of it by being honest straight to her face, you know? What's the point of being honest? If I'm honest, I can't get the stuff anymore. She can't buy so that, things, dude. I don't know, man. I just I just think most, most men would handle that a little bit differently. I'm sure they would. You know, I'm just not them. I'm me. And me, I've got a new TV. i got a new bed. i well, got a new Tom, DVD player. Tom, All how would you do Tom, is the track. Tom, how would you handle that situation, man? Would you would you handle it the same way using somebody? Well, else? I couldn't to... call a talk show because everybody would know it was me. <laughs> yeah, you'd be kind of screwed in that situation. I have to tell people face to face because if I tried to call in, they always know it's me. <laughs> Good point. Hey, I'm first time caller, a long time listener, Tom. It's nice to hear from you. All right. Well, I don't. I didn't know that I'd called you, but uh, I really enjoyed the experience. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Bo and Skip. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That frees up a couple of phone lines, and the phone lines have certainly been lit for this. We're talking to people like you, who are in long distance relationships, and the other person, not you, the other person. Yeah, cried at the airport or wrote you tearful letters. I miss you so much, honey. I miss you. In the meantime, and while they're gone, you're doing whatever the hell you want, and they have no idea. Richard, it's Tom like a show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Michael. Hello. Hi. Hi, Michael. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Um. Yeah, I have a situation. And, like, I have a relationship right now. Uh huh. This girl's at San Antonio, and I'm in California. Now, how did you meet her? On the Internet? Um, I, I went over there. I was, I was visiting my parents. And um, she she broke up with her boyfriend because her boyfriend was cheating on her. Mm-hmm. And, like, I was, like, drinking a lot, and I was talking to her. And um, after that, I, uh, all, all of a sudden, like, I, I started macking on her. And um, after that, like, she wanted me to stay there, and she didn't want me to leave and everything. I come back over here, and, like, I'm just wondering uh, what's happening over there, and I'm over here. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> well, Michael, uh, let me ask you this question. Is she really, like, in love with you or anything? Well, we, I, we've been going on for three months. Oh, so it's not that serious. It's not, uh, well, I'm gonna, I, want, I want to try to get with her. Because she like seems like she's interested in me, my, on Tom. You're talking about the girl in Texas. Yeah. She's interested in you. Yeah. Right. But you live in Los Angeles. Yes. So, what? You can have a monogamous relationship with someone who lives two thousand miles away. Mm, not no, you're really. not. Well, 
come on, like, I'm, I'm from California, and, like, I'm splitting game with different girls over here. Right. So you want to let the woman in Texas believe. Well, I'm not going to tell her. I'm just going to leave it alone. I don't know what should I do. Should I stay here, Tom, or should I leave? Are you in love, or you just want to bang her? I just want to bang her. Well, well, why would you leave for that? I don't know, Tom. Um, How it's two thousand miles away. Well, I would like to bang her and leave her, and that's it. One I, time? No, like probably a couple of times, and then um, right. well, I find, mean, uh, find other males. Find well, other yeah. Males. Yeah, but uh, let me ask you a question. How, can you afford to keep flying back and forth like that? Who's paying for this? My mom. Oh, your mom is? Yeah, she's mm-hmm. like... I'm not telling you, you know, what to do. I just, all I'm saying is... Uh, well, no, 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 that's not the reason. Because my decision was, like, if I want to move back or stay here. Because me and my brother don't really get into, like, a good, serious um, brothership. And because I, I get in arguments with him. Mm-hmm. And we had one on Saturday. Right. He got me so mad. I didn't really like to um, talk to him for a while. Yeah. And um, and his girlfriend is like a really bitchy bitch. Okay. Bitchy bitch. Yes, a bitchy bitch. And I don't like her. I don't like her mom. I don't like. My brother tells his girlfriend and tells her mom and tells her mom and her nephew that I have anger problems. Do you? Yeah. Oh. And like I don't want my brother telling no one. Just between me and him. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm already getting it from um, his girlfriend. Like, like, oh, you getting mad now? I was like, oh, who told you that? Mm-hmm. And, like, I already know who told him. All right, this is awfully involved, and we're going way off the topic with this here, okay? Pal, yeah. bottom line is you don't even have a long-distance relationship. No, not really, but I'm... I'm I, That's what I was asking for this hour. Thank you. <laughs> Life is like a soap opera, for God's sake. One eight hundred. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what it is. I, I'm completely losing track of all the characters in the soap opera, and it really has nothing to do with what we're talking. About. He's thinking of banging some chick in another city that he's never even banged before. That's not a long distance relationship. That's a uh, that's a long distance fantasy. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Courtney on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, Courtney. How are you? Do you care, Courtney? Of course I do. I'm doing great. Good. I just wanted to say something really quick. Mm-hmm. I think it's a waste of time for men and women to get into these long-distance relationships. There's enough problems when they're in your same area. That's so right. Your time in a long-distance relationship, buying gifts, saying I love you, I mean, you know, wasting your phone bill when you want to kick their asses when they're next door, when they're down the street from right. you. Right. Imagine when they can get away with anything they want to get away with. Anything. Exactly. But not only that, I mean, I was with someone for, for five years. It was a long-distance relationship. Well, not really long-distance, but it was long-distance on my phone bill. Hmm. And he ended up not only cheating on me, but getting another woman pregnant. But on top of all of that, he was still calling me every day, telling me that he loved me, sending me gifts. Why did he waste his time doing that? Why did I waste my time doing that? Because you believed it was possible to do it. Right, but at the same time, it taught me a lesson that he could have been in the same area and still been a dog. Right. So these women that get, I mean, you know, just upset and they're crying and they're, oh, I can't believe he did this to me and all of this. Why waste your time with someone that's that far away when you can have the same headache right here? There you go. Uh, if you're going to have the same problems locally, why uh, have problems with somebody long distance? Exactly. And the joke was just on the phone with you. He sounds so ridiculous. All of this mess about he's afraid, I just think he's a wimp, to be honest. I think he wanted to get on the radio and be a pussy that's and right. tell everybody that, oh, yeah, well, I just wanted to say this, you know, because she might be listening. He isn't afraid of her. He wanted to get some airtime, Tom, because if he really did not want to have any kids, he would still tell it to her face. He wants to still screw with her because he wants gifts, because obviously he's not stable enough to buy his own bed. Well, and not not only that, but I do think that a lot of women like being treated like crap, and she might be one of them. One eight hundred. One eight hundred. 
Santa. I just want to announce to all the women out there that there's the image of Jesus on my penis. And I'll be standing out of the parking lot after the show. <laughs> you want to come down here and get a look? I'm going to be unzipping my fly. And then I expect you all to get on your knees and pray. Better watch it, Tom. You're going to have a big old lineup out there tonight. I know. The Tom Likey Show. <laughs> Tom like his show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Toll free, 1-800-5800-TOM. You are in a long-distance relationship, and the other person thinks you're pining away for them. But in reality, you're banging the crap out of other people. You're doing whatever you want. Justin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Likas? All right, Justin. Um, yeah, well, in quick story, I've been with my girlfriend now maybe three and a half years, and I live over here in Los Angeles, and you know, anywhere in L.A., if it's an hour drive away with traffic, it's going to push it back to about two hours. Yeah. So, um, need to say, I haven't been the, the faithfulest guy. Um, I only get to see her on the weekends because of work and school. Both of our schedules only allow us to see us on the weekends, and during the week, I'm a free man. And, uh... Just different experiences, the way I see, you know, live your life, you only live once, you know, I'm going to be looking back when I'm like 40 years old and thinking I had done stuff that I'm doing now, so why is my... Why, is my well, why do you need a girlfriend anyway? I guess I'm scared to break up with her. Why? I, it's always like a comfort zone, you know? Why is it comfortable? I mean, uh, is it more comfortable to be getting laid all the time? Well, I mean, just just getting laid is getting laid. There's no emotional attachment, and she. I mean, the people that I, that I mess around with. You're too you know, young to have a girlfriend, anyway. You're 21. Yeah, no, 21. Too young. Too young. Yep. So should I just help break down and tell her everything I've done and just? No, you, know, you don't have to break down and tell her. But come on. Just break it up, then. Yeah, you know, well, you know, she'll still bang you. Uh, go for it. But come on. Just, just keep on banging her. Yeah, she'll let you. Is it let me? Yeah, why not? Me. That's what I did. I just like that. All right, fine. Then you already got what you wanted. Move on. Move on. Move on. All right. Sounds good. I know it sounds good. Gary on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Gary. Hello, Tom. What up? What's going on, brother? It's doing a radio show here, Gary. You are the professor. You're my idol. Thank you. I am engaged from 3,000 big miles away, <laughs> getting mine every weekend. Really? That's right. And right. not from her, I take it. Not from her. Her every three months. Every three months she comes home, or That's you go to visit her. Where is she? Well, actually, I come home. She, she's in L.A., and I live out in Maryland. And, and oh, you're the one who left town? Yeah, I left town for grad school. Oh, how convenient for you. That's right. Now, when you were leaving, did you already think ahead uh, what you were going to be able to get away with, or were you just thinking about grad school? No, I, I knew that there was going to be a little bit of fun on the side when I got out of here, brother. And you could have gone to grad school in Southern California somewhere. Well, I could have, but I wanted to get on the other side of the country for a little while, see so, what life was like out on the other coast. So you could do whatever you want. Damn right. I need some soft shell crab. Oh, crab cakes. Got to love them, brother. Crab cakes, baby. Crab cakes and uh, uh, some bearded clam, too. Oh, I got the bearded clam every week. Now, I prefer the clam with a little bit less beard. You know, shaved clam is yeah. good for me, but it's all it's all clam. Very nice. <laughs> you have a couple of steamers this weekend, as a matter of fact? Well, I actually got a couple of steamers this weekend. You know, it's funny. People think the only the beautiful people around California, they got beautiful people out on this coast, too, my man. Really? That's right. Hey, Tom, you are the man. Can you take me out old school style, brother? Of course I can, Gary. Here you go. Email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. 